Hi, my name is Laura Jacobs, and I am so excited to connect today and talk about two of my favorite essential oils, frankincense and myrrh, and how not only were they the chosen gifts in ancient days, but they're still the chosen gifts for today. And how fun to reflect back on history and to the birth of the Christ child and why the Magi, the three wise men, chose of all the things they could choose to bring these special gifts to the Christ child. There must be something significant about them. So let's jump into some history and talk a little bit about frankincense. And you know, here's a bottle of it right here. So we like to call it a bottle of liquid gold. And how fun, right? It's leapt right out of the pages of the history book and we have it right in our own homes. So let's look back historically and find out what was it used for then and maybe that'll help us understand more about our own purposes today. First of all, a little bit about frankincense. It's considered still today to be really truly one of the most valuable essential oils and for good reason as we'll discover as we talk about it. Anciently it was traded and the numbers are kind of astounding. They were trading more like 3,000 tons of frankincense in the day and today more like 100 tons. So that begs some curiosity right then and there. It was very, very prized commodity of the wealthy, pharaohs, queens. Um, they used it for skin and beauty, cosmetics, even beauty masks, which we can relate to today. It was used for spiritual benefits. If we look more to the physical health applications specifically, they used it for respiratory health, to combat infection, circulation, eyesight. And I think this one's really fun. It was for digestive purposes where they actually chewed on the resin and like gum. And then they would even swallow it to help promote digestive health. And you know, our purposes today are a little bit different and we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, a couple things more about history. In one of the oldest medical documents known to man, there is mention of frankincense and myrrh, made the page. They used it to burn for incense during their spiritual rit rituals and practices. And I think this is fun, especially for the girls. You know, when they burned that incense, there was the black coal or dust that was left. And then they would take that as we can all think of Cleopatra, for example, and the eyeliner. And it came from that burnt frankincense, kind of fun. And that's the word coal, K-O-H-L, came from that. Now let's talk a little bit more about the trade. There was a 2,400 mile trek from some of the major cities to a very particular uh, secure stronghold location in Saudi Arabia, in, in Oman, in that area. So they would go on this 2,400 mile frankincense trail to move that 3,000 tons we talked about to a very secure location called Petra. And this is actually a, a kind of a cool point of curiosity. I don't know if you've ever hiked a slot canyon. I have, and they're, they're quite narrow. Well, this was in, a, in essence a slot canyon, and so it was a very, very deep, deep passage of a couple miles. So hence it was easy to guard. And way down this pathway was this structure that they carved right out of the rock. It looks like the facade of a building, kind of like a bank, and inside was their vault. And this is where they would store this tonnage of frankincense resin. And we're talking 6,000 camels. We're talking a huge entourage to move this kind of commodity. But this is where they kept it because for them, again, it was valuable. It was their gold and the things that, that signified wealth. So I love to go into the atmosphere of the tree itself and where it grows. So picture yourself in places like Oman or today Somalia in very arid, hot, dry climate, you know, maybe 125 degrees during the day. And here are these trees growing. And I think it's important to recognize that what makes plants so great in producing essential oils is actually the stress that they're under is actually part of the magic of creating an environment in which the plant makes really particular chemicals. So nothing would be an exception here with frankincense that very specific chemical constituents are created within the plant that are now of course found in the oil. And this environment is a huge part of creating that. Now, the trees last for a hundred years or so. And so it's passed through the generations where families will care for trees and that art and that craft is, is moved forward. And so this environment is absolutely perfect for frankincense to grow in and for it to be harvested. Now, last I checked, there was about 25 different types of species available. And what's important is to recognize that doTERRA's frankincense oil, which is exclusive, it's only sourced to doTERRA. We work straight with sultans out of the country of Somalia. So it's kind of fun. It might, like, brings to mind the story of Aladdin and sultans. And yes, it's still a modern day uh, trade that we get to have with these particular individuals that run these family business organizations. So 
uh, we've chosen very specifically the frankincense species that we want in order to get the exact chemical constituents that are desired. So doTERRA takes the time to not just willy-nilly pick up any kind of plant and bring it in. They go out and seek very specific chemical combinations and compositions to give us the value that we desire chemically in our oils. And so different climates are going to produce different compounds. So this particular arid dry climate and the stress that the tree is under is perfect for pro providing a very wide variety of compounds that we find in frankincense. It's, it's a very, very diverse oil, chemically speaking. So they harvest about two to three times a year, and it has to be done correctly. There's an, an art to scoring of the tree. We would think of it as a slash or a cut. They call it scoring, and there's an art to that. And over a, you know, a week or two period of time, it starts to bleed, I guess we could say, as the resin starts to ooze out of that slash. And then those resin tears, as they're called, they'll ooze out in kind of a, a milky white substance. And then the further they move away from the cut, the more they change in color. And only about six to seven percent of the resin that's collected is actually distilled into the essential oil, which is actually fun to talk about because what happens to the leftover stuff? Well, if you've ever heard of a product from doTERRA called Alpha CRS, it contains Boswellia, serrata resin extract and it's a wonderful component of our alpha crs and brings tremendous value you wouldn't want to find boswellic acid for example in your frankincense oil that would mean it wasn't pure and yet you would want to find boswellia extract for example in our alpha crs product because it brings tremendous value to all the merits of that product so the oil is very very concentrated as you can imagine being distilled from that resin now when the the tears are gathered so they you know break off that resin from the tree as it hardens and it's collected and it's separated into three types of quality a first a second and a third tier of quality the third tier is the farthest from the incision mark and it contains more impurities right as it moves away whereas the more milky white is more pure and close to the incision and so what ours is being distilled from is the more pure first quality, right? So we're actually um, buying the higher quality, which is lovely. And it takes time, you know, not only does a man need to go out, typically it'll be a husband and a family and he's gonna go live perhaps even in a cave for a number of weeks or even months to gather the resin. And he's gonna bring it back to the women. I've seen pictures of this and they're sitting on the ground and they're sorting the tears out into these three piles. And then of course it's packaged up and sent off. So then when it comes to the distillation process, um, there's a very unique type of distillation that's required for frankincense because it's a resin, right? It's different than plant material we might think of from say like peppermint leaves. And it's a very, very scientific process, very intriguing. So now we've talked a little bit about the history and some of the merits of its growing aspects. Let's talk a little bit more about daily use. Now, first of all, I just need to say, when it comes to frankincense and myrrh, I highly encourage you to pursue your own curiosities. For our purposes, our conversation is limited and what we can actually say and discuss about the oils, you know, to be curious, go get books and things where you can go study and learn more about all the possibilities for these great oils. I just wanna say this, because I think this is a really fun way to think about your frankincense and myrrh, is if we go into the, the Latin language, we find two words. One word is matter, M-A-T-E-R, and the other word is patter, P-A-T-E-R. So matter, that's a word we're familiar with, but we have two Ts, so matter meaning matter. Yes, that's a, lat, a Latin interpretation of that. And patter, with a single T, think of the word pattern. So patter meaning father or pattern, matter meaning mother or matter. So I want you to think of kind of this mother-father relationship with our frankincense and myrrh and how they bring in sort of what we might call from a Chinese perspective, a yin and a yang partnership. And keep those thoughts in your mind about how does myrrh help us with the matter aspect of our lives and how does frankincense help us with the pattern aspects of our lives. So it's also terrific for simple immune support or immune stimulation. It's fun to highlight one of the chemical constituents is alpha pinenes and it brings such incredible value to the chemistry of frankincense, also respiratory health. Now, I love to, to jump into something really specific with frankincense, which is cellular health. Because of the high, high level of monoterpenes, and again, we have a variety of monoterpenes, alpha pinenes being the number one of those as far as the head count goes. Um, this chemistry brings incredible value for our cellular health because it's able to help us 
create and support normal processes in the body. You know, every day we need to make sure our cells are, are keeping up, right? Making sure they're staying on their game. Some cells need a little bit of that. Same thing like our skin, right? Rejuvenation, restoration, cleaning, purifying. And, and others need a little encouragement to go about their business of, of finishing their lifespan. These are normal processes in your body every day where cellular life, longevity, and cellular apoptosis are normal activities. And Frankincense is awesome at encouraging an optimization of both of those processes. Now, um, this, is, this is a neat way to talk about Frankincense. Its aroma is such a powerful component of what it has to offer. So I'd like to talk a little bit about diffusing the oil or rubbing it on the back of your neck, bottoms of your feet, or just simply, you know, this is a favorite way to use the oil is just to simply take a drop or two, place it in the palm of the hand. You can mix it with maybe some favorite oils. It blends fantastic with things like peppermint or a citrus oil or lavender or some combination thereof. Rub it between the hands and then just cup it over the face and, and breathe it in. And it's kind of a pine type smell, right? It does smell kind of tree-like, which is just lovely and really refreshing and has a rejuvenating aroma. So this is gonna be super helpful in areas like mood, when we wanna uplift mood or enhance mood or stabilize mood, create a sense of well-being. These are all really important aspects of feeling well, right? In addition, it's fantastic at alleviating things like stress or anxious feelings. And that, that's a real neat partnership there because when we are moving into an area of excessive stress or anxious feelings, we actually tend to interrupt our chemical flow and get distracted. And so the, by dissipating those feelings, it allows more of our natural chemistry to be available for supporting uplifted moods. It's wonderful for the brain. We could talk about the brain all day long. It's fantastic for that. It's particularly great for stimulating the limbic brain, which we often refer to as our emotional brain. It's a nerve tonic, so it's great for the nervous system. It's great combined, as I mentioned, with other oils, especially if you want to do things like calm stress or reduce things like tension. Um, all right, now I want to share something just kind of a little bit special and different than maybe what you've thought about, and that's oftentimes we don't consider the real personality of the oil and what it has to offer to us emotionally. So I'm highlighting here, as you see the slides coming along with my presentation, a cover of a book called Essent Emotions and Essential Oils. And I'm showing and highlighting here a page on frankincense. And this is something I invite you to go explore for yourself and to learn more about the personality of the oils and what they have to offer emotionally. And I'll just keep this really, really simple. You know, you see here the subtitle on the page is the oil of truth. And if I was to say in a simple way, what, what does frankincense bring? It brings about an ability to purify ourselves from the things of the world. So think about like, what makes you feel toxic, right? So whether it's relationships or just, I don't know, exposure to everyday stuff, right? And we're supposed to naturally be processing toxins all the time. And sometimes we want to do a better job of processing, you know, toxic emotions that are normal, part of our everyday life. We just want them to kind of move along, right? And eliminate them. So I want to invite you to consider that frankincense is an amazing partner to your healthy emotional life. And I've provided a slide here with you for you, a really up close and personal view of this slashing and that resin coming out and what a beautiful image that is. And then the tree. And I, I want you to pause for a minute and take a look at this frankincense tree and say to yourself, well, what does it look like? And uh, I've asked lots of audiences this and I got a great response. If you look at it, it really has the shape of a brain and it's actually brain food, right? So nature will oftentimes kind of give a uh, a view of itself of some item. I don't know. Here's a good example. A kidney bean. It looks like a kidney, right? If you slash a carrot open and then you look at the butt end of the carrot, it actually looks exactly like an iris. And we always talk about carrots being eye food. So kind of similar idea here with the frankincense that if it were to tattletale on itself, like what does it bring? It looks like a brain, but looks like the entire nervous system inside of the brain. And if we look at its circumstances in living, it's growing in rock, right? So it has to have unbelievable tenacity to hold on and grow over a cliff, for example. It grows in tremendous heat, so it's got to be enduring. So what its chemistry offers us, right, is that as it develops its chemistry by living with tremendous tenacity and endurance, it brings that chemistry to you. So when you wanna experience the ability to have longevity and tenacity and feel more healthy and to eliminate 
and purify yourself from the things of the world. Frankincense is your partner. So what a better partner than for everyday use of I, I love frankincense for everyday usage. To think of it as a partner for everyday great health. And one of my favorite stories about the frankincense tree is the more it's scored, the better it performs. So, you know, sometimes it, we might want to think of life like, don't touch me life. I don't want to be, you know, hurt by you. But you know what? It's by having experiences in life that we become better and better people. And I think frankincense is beautiful at bringing us that message. So let's move on to myrrh. Just kind of some of the technical stuff about myrrh. It's also steam distilled. If we were to talk about its aromatic description, some might say it smells hot or smoky or herbaceous or woody, dry. It's more bitter. It's more of a bitter tasting and smelling herb. And I think a great way to summarize all that is it's earthy. Um, again, the resin is what we use from the tree, very similar. And it's sourced from Ethiopia. And it's very high, again, in certain compounds, especially a group of chemicals known as sesquiterpenes, which brings, again, tremendous value. And unlike any other resins, kind of fun little trivia, it expands more when it's heated. Now, if we go back to our history and we look at some interesting facts, we find that the ancient Egyptians used myrrh. And this is actually a pretty famous thing if you look scripturally, for example, and you think about um, the story of Mary Magdalene breaking open the alabaster box with spikenard, and it was referred to as an ointment. And we look into ancient history, ointments generally always contained myrrh because they anointed the dead or people who are going to die soon with myrrh. It was for embalming. It was very common. So it's used in religious ceremonies, again, for makeup, perfumes, incense. It's been used for centuries in traditional Chinese medicine. And through the first century AD, the Arabia was producing there about 448 tons annually. This one's one of my favorites. The pellets were burned to repel fleas. How interesting. And both of these spices, frankincense and myrrh, were transported from the Arabian Peninsula to places as far away as India and China as well. Now, myrrh was valued by its weight in gold. It too was a commodity and traded like money. And it was used for centuries for both internal and external health. So not a new idea. And it's derived again from a gummy resin that comes out of a very small thorny tree. It's mentioned in the Bible 152 times, and the word myrrh in Arabic actually stands for bitter. So it's referred to in the Bible as the balm of Gilead. Um, any kind of skin irritation, it's gonna be useful there. It is very widely used today in things like toothpaste and mouthwashes. It's also, interestingly enough, added to things like wine and other beverages to add flavor. It's also fantastic to diffuse, and you'll, you'll see here on my screen, I'm featuring a holiday blend with frankincense, myrrh, cassia, and white fur. Just a delightful diffuser blend to give you that holiday feeling, but also to help promote awareness, emotional balance, to lift mood, and a sense of well-being. So really great ways to use your myrrh. Now, additionally, just kind of a last mention, not only to myrrh, but most especially with frankincense, it's just so valuable for soothing and comforting. So whether you've had a strenuous workout, you know, we're all, we all need a little soothing after a strenuous workout, or maybe you've been moving and lifting boxes, or it's just been a long day, reach for that frankincense. In fact, I really like to combine it with my deep blue rub. I'll oftentimes put frankincense on first directly on the skin and then top it off with some deep blue rub. And it's just fantastic for bringing all those uh, extremities and back, right? You know, back to their, their good order. It's fantastic for lessening tension in the shoulders, the head, neck, any of those areas where we would desire that. And again, just sharing with you here at the last, um, regarding myrrh, the emotional aspects of myrrh and featuring again the book and a page out of the book and, and again, inviting you to go and experience more of it. Here, the subtitle on it is The Oil of Mother Earth. And I want you to think again of frankincense is your daddy oil and, and myrrh is your mama oil. And just go to them when you need that, that feeling that we all need good parents, right? And we need to to feel that energy and both of them are so comforting and so restoring and so rejuvenating and, and deserve to be part of your daily routines. And just a little caption here that I provided for you on the slide that like historically, like we think of it, I want you to think of it emotionally this way where frankincense was purifying us from the things of the world. The myrrh is more about inoculating us from the things of the world. So we can think of it that way emotionally and just really enjoy having it as a partner in your daily life, in your daily routine to just surround yourself, right? Just like a mom and a hug. It's a great way to help us stay feeling protected and insulated from things that maybe generally can wear us down. Now I'm featuring for you a wheel. It's a properties wheel. It can be found on doTERRA.com. If you'll go to our advocates and go to the tools 
selection there under the menu you'll find things like brochures and flyers as options click on flyers and you can download a PDF of this wheel it's called the oils properties wheel and right now what you're seeing on my screen is the front side of that showing how we can actually choose our oils by their properties and I just really want to encourage this method of use and so uh, frankincense is located on the front side of the wheel and as you look at that brown section there you can see on the outer ring it's titled renewing so you know if we're looking for a soothing oil or reju you know rejuvenation or energizing we can look for these different terms on the wheel and so each oil is featured in one place and frankincense is featured as renewing and so I just want to invite you to use the wheel as a regular everyday tool for you and, and ask yourself the question what do I want to feel more of in my life I want to feel more energized I want to feel more calm I want to feel more soothed I want to feel more renewed and use this wheel to go to it and discover what oil would be recommended for you. you're going to have a few choices and then behind that deeper into the wheel you're going to see that chemistry and you're going to start to get more and more familiar with what makes these oils so great so there you're going to see alpha pinenes featured for example in regards to the frankincense if you flip it to the back side I'm not showing that image you're going to discover myrrh is featured on the back side which is more of a, a sesquiterpene focus front side monoterpene and myrrh of course is very grounding and very soothing as we've already talked about so that's going to be an exciting way for you to continue your education on how to use your oils and feel really empowered about making those choices and lastly it's always best to end with a discussion on application methods you know have uh, take it to a new level put it on that location either of them are going to be great for those purposes especially we focused on skin and the, the soothing and the comforting aspects I just want to thank you for the time to get together and talk about these chosen gifts and may they be chosen gifts in your life and something you can experience on a daily and a regular basis and enjoy the gifts that they can bring to you